Travelers Companies Inc., stock ticker TRV, is a holding company that, through its subsidiaries, provides commercial and personal property and casualty insurance products to individuals, businesses, government units, and associations. Founded in 1853, Travelers is now a $40 billion by market cap insurance major that employs more than 32,000 people. Net written premiums for fiscal year 2022 break down across the following segments. Business insurance, 50%, personal insurance, 40%, and bond and specialty insurance, 10%. Travelers is the only PNC insurance company in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. This is truly a blue chip company. I really like this business model. See, most business models make money by selling products and or services. The insurance business model takes this a step further, making money from its core service many times over. This is due to the float. The float is the capital that builds up as a natural course of doing business. An insurance company charges premiums upfront for coverage. Claims against policies come in later, at which time an insurance company has to pay out. The lag between collecting premiums and paying claims often leads to an insurance company sitting on a lot of cash which is a low cost and low risk source of capital that earns returns all by itself. That's the float. For perspective on just how powerful this can be, Travelers manages an investment portfolio with a carrying value of $86.7 billion as of the end of fiscal year 2022. The investment portfolio is more than twice as large as the company's entire market cap. As you might imagine, this kind of capital base can produce a lot of income for the company. Indeed, Travelers reported just over $2.8 billion in net income last fiscal year. Well, the investment portfolio was responsible for almost all of that with net investment income after tax coming in at slightly under $2.2 billion for the fiscal year. The float is what makes the insurance business model so lucrative. It's easy to assume that an insurance company makes money by selling insurance, but the truth is that most of the money is made by properly utilizing the float. Just imagine if every company could collect money for its products and or services long before customers actually get what they paid for. Travelers almost can't help but to continue to churn out money even if premiums aren't strong. This is why the company should be able to continue growing its revenue, profit, and dividend for years to come. Already, Travelers has increased its dividend for 19 consecutive years, well on its way to dividend aristocrat status. The 10-year dividend growth rate is 7.4%. Travelers has been a model of consistency in this department as the dividend raises have been extremely uniform over the years. In fact, the most recent dividend raise of 7.5%, basically right on the nose. Along with that high single-digit dividend growth, the stock offers a market beating 2.3% yield. This yield, by the way, is right in line with its own five-year average, and the dividend is protected by a low payout ratio of only 34.1%. I see clear sailing ahead for travelers and its ability to continue raising the dividend at a high single-digit rate. Great dividend metrics here, especially for conservative dividend growth investors. Looking at business growth, travelers moved its revenue from $26.1 billion in fiscal year 2013 to $36.9 billion in fiscal year 2022. That's a compound annual growth rate of 3. Pretty much right where I'd expect it to be for a fairly mature PNC insurance business. Meanwhile, Travelers grew its earnings per share from $9.74 to $11.77 over this period, which is a compound annual growth rate of 2.1%. On the face of it, that's a disappointing number. However, with an insurance business, much depends on the starting point and ending point, and that's because of events that may happen or may not happen that can radically alter claims, the combined ratio, and of course, profit. In this case, fiscal year 2013 was an unusually strong year for travelers with EPS up 55% from the prior fiscal year 2012. At the same time, fiscal year 2022 was a somewhat weak year for the business. If we back up the 10-year comparison by just one year at the starting point and ending point, the EPS compound annual growth rate is over 9%. Thus, I'd take the 2.1% number with a big grain of salt. It's worth quickly noting that Travelers has been in an extraordinary repurchaser of shares with the outstanding share count down by about 32% over the last decade. Looking forward, CFRA believes that Travelers will compound its earnings per share at an annual rate of 8% over the next three years. This would be more in line with what Travelers has historically generated. I think this is a pretty accurate reflection of reality for the business. CFRA states that its, quote, forecast assumes the underwriting results remain profitable and that Travelers' prior year loss development trends remain positive. Results in 2022 reflected a 2% rise 
in an already elevated level of after-tax catastrophe losses offset by a significant improvement in prior year loss development trends, unquote. Building on that point, travelers ended fiscal year 2022 with a combined ratio of 95.6%. The combined ratio is a measurement of an insurance company's underwriting profit. In order to ascertain it, you divide the total sum of incurred losses and expenses by the earned premium. The lower the combined ratio, the better. Travelers ended fiscal year 2021 with a combined ratio of 94.5%. So you can see some erosion here in underwriting efficiency. And that speaks on what I noted earlier about fiscal year 2022 being a somewhat poor year for the business. With PNC insurance, you have to accept some uncertainty and lumpiness as a natural course of doing business. After all, catastrophes are unpredictable. It's really the long-term trends that matter most. As long as you don't become irrational with your underwriting, and as long as the float is managed properly, the business model can do very well over the long run. I don't see anything unrealistic about where CFRA is at with travelers here. And if that's the base case, it sets up the dividend for like dividend growth. That is an expectation for a continuation of the status quo. High single digit dividend growth is a reasonable one. When one is already starting off with a 2% plus yield, that puts shareholders in a pretty good position for an approximate 10% annualized total return, assuming no major changes with valuation. Getting that kind of total return with a conservative blue chip dividend growth stock is compelling in my view. Moving over to the balance sheet, Travelers has a solid financial position. The long-term debt to equity ratio is 0.3, while the interest coverage ratio is approximately 10. The credit ratings are well into investment grade territory. The company's senior debt has the following rate. Ratings, A Standard & Poor's, A2 Moody's, A Fitch. Profitability is good over the last five years. The firm is average annual net margin of 8.6% and annual return on equity of 11.1%. Travelers is running a tight chip and earns its blue chip status. And with brand recognition, scale and diversification that spread out risk, underwriting expertise, and the established flow, Travelers does benefit from durable competitive advantages. Of course, there are risks to consider. Regulation, litigation, and competition are omnipresent risks in every industry. Competition in particular is a risk in insurance as it can pressure insurers on the underwriting side. Natural disasters, which are impossible to predict with 100% accuracy, are a constant threat. The company's investment portfolio is mostly in fixed income instruments that have exposure to interest rates and government solvencies. The very business model in and of itself is a risk and an uncertain one at that, as it's only in the future that shareholders may find out that underwriting policies of the past weren't appropriately priced. Recent slippages in the combined ratio will have to be rectified. Overall, I see these risks as pretty standard for a PNC insurer, but the company's standing is definitely far and above standard. And with the stock down about 8% this year, the valuation has moved beyond standard and looks appealing. Stock is trading hands for a price earnings ratio of 14.7. That's significantly below the broader market's earnings multiple. And while it's pretty close to the stock's own five-year average PE ratio, this stock has had its pricing depressed for a considerable period of time during the pandemic, which skews the averages. The price to book ratio of 1.7 is quite reasonable for a world-class insurance operation. And the yield, as noted earlier, is basically right in line with its own recent historical average. I value shares using a dividend discount model analysis that factored in a 10% discount rate and a long-term dividend growth rate of 7.5%. This growth rate is at the higher end of what I allow for, but the consistent nature of the business gives me confidence. In spite of the lumpiness and underlying profits, Travelers raises its dividend in a machine-like way. The dividend relentlessly rises by about 7.5% or so year after year after year. It's a beautiful thing to behold. And with CFRA seeing Travelers producing an 8% compound annual growth rate in its earnings per share over the next few years, that should open the door for Travelers to keep doing what Travelers has been doing. Everything just fits into place really nice here. You can easily imagine the glide path in place. It's not an exciting business, but Travelers really does get the job done. The dividend discount model analysis gives me a fair value of $172. The reason I use a dividend discount model analysis is because a business is ultimately equal to the sum of all the future cash flow it can provide. The dividend discount model analysis is a tailored version of the discounted cash flow model analysis as it simply substitutes dividends and dividend growth for cash flow and growth. It then discounts those future dividends back to the present day to account for the time value money since a dollar tomorrow is not worth the same amount as a dollar today. I find it to be a fairly accurate way to value dividend growth stocks. Morningstar rates TRV as a four-star stock with a fair value estimate of $194. CFRA rates TRV as a four-star buy with a 12-month target price of $205. 
I came out pretty low this time around, which surprises me. Perhaps I was too cautious. Averaging the three numbers out gives us a final valuation of $190.33, which would indicate the stock is possibly 9% undervalued. Here's the bottom line, guys. Travelers Companies Inc. is a business that has shown remarkable amounts of consistency over the years. It's a blue chip stock with a market beating yield, a high single digit dividend growth rate, a low payout ratio, nearly 20 consecutive years of dividend increases, and the potential that shares are 9% undervalued. Conservative dividend growth investors looking for a great business at a reasonable valuation should have this name on their list. And now for a special news announcement. Raytheon Technologies Corp, stock ticker RTX, just landed a massive contract modification of $5.5 billion for its Pratt & Whitney unit. This comes from the US Air Force and it brings the total cumulative face value of this particular contract from just over $2.7 billion to just over $8.2 billion. Raytheon Technologies offers long-term dividend growth investors a great way to play both aerospace and increasing U.S. spending on defense. This contract is further proof of just how much money this company continues to make for its shareholders. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give us a like if you did and let us know in the comments what you think about this stock. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on new content. Also take a look at the description box below for some important links, including the link to my personal stock portfolio. This six-figure portfolio, which I call the Fire Fund, generates enough passive dividend income for me to live off of. It allowed me to retire in my early 30s. I made my portfolio entirely accessible over at Patreon, and I also post alerts there whenever I buy or sell a stock. I put my money where my mouth is and am often invested in the same high quality dividend growth stocks that I make videos on. Over the years, I've heard from thousands of investors who have been profiting from many of the same exact stocks that I own. So if you think this is something that you could benefit from as well, check the link in the description to see my portfolio and start getting my buy and sell alerts. I'll see you next time. Thank you.